Okay, determine the bar force in each member of the double pitch roof truss shown. So this is now your roof truss. So we have hinge support at A and uh, roller support at point A. So again, we have your A vertical for your hinge reaction. So this is your a vertical and then we have your a horizontal and then the reaction of the roller is normal to the application of the roller so we have h vertical now so first <coughs> Let's try to determine the value of x1, x2, and x3. So if you try to consider this triangle in here, okay, so let us try to determine the distance from point A to point F, and let us consider that one as Z. So your Z in here is equal to the square root of 12 square plus 6 square or that is equal to 100 square root of 180 hence the length of AB is equal to the square root of 180 over 3 BD is the square root of 180 over 3 and the length of DF is the square root of 180 all over 3 so using now ratio and proportion we now have uh, your x1, so this is your x1, now is to length AB, and length AB is the square root of 180 over 3, and this is equal to, this is equal to, so we have uh, your the slope is two two one this is six this is twelve so we have one two the square root of five so this is equal to two over the square root of five hence the value of x one is now equal to four meters let's try to determine x of two so your x of two again ratio and proportion x sub 2 so we have x sub 2 is to the length ad abd and the length abd is equal to to the square root of 180 all over 3 and this is equal to 2 over the square root of 5 so that the value of x sub 2 is now equal to 8 meters so we now have your x sub 3 so your x sub 3 in here is equal to so we have your x sub 3 and this is equal to you try to take note this is 6 and this is perpendicular hence your x sub 3 in here is equal to 3 meters. Let's try to consider this distance in here to be y1. And then we have this distance, which is equal to... So we have y1. So this distance in here is now your y2. And this is now your y3. So we have y3. And this one in here is now your y sub 2. Again, using similar triangle, we now have uh, your y1 is to x1. So y1 is to x sub 1. And this is equal to 6 is to 12. So we have 6 is to 12. 
So we have uh, y1, s to 4, is equal to 6, s to 12. So that the value of y1 is now equal to 2 meters. Then next is y2 is to x sub 2. Y sub 2 is to x sub 2 is now equal to 6 is to 12. So we have your y2 is to x sub 2 which is equal to 8 is equal to 6 over 12. So we have your y sub 2 is equal to, so we now have the value of y sub 2 is equal to 4 meters. Next is now your y3. So again, we have your y3 is to x sub 3. And this is equal to 6 is to 6. So we have now your 6 is to 6. So we have y3 is to 3 meters and that one is equal to 1. So that the value of y3 in here is now equal to 3 meters. So that is therefore the value of y3. So let us try to determine now the reactions at point A and at point B. Now, summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero to the right forces positive. So your A horizontal is equal to zero. Then we have summation of moment about point H is equal to zero. Then we have counterclockwise moment positive. So AV multiply this one by okay so let's try to multiply this one by this distance which is equal to 18 so that's going clockwise multiply this one by 18 so we're getting moment about this point and then 1 multiply this one by 18 plus 1 multiply this one by 18. Okay, so plus 2 multiply this one by 18 minus x1. And x1 in here is equal to 4. So that is 18 minus 4. Now plus this 2. So we have plus 2 multiply this one by 18 minus x of 2. So that is 18 minus x sub 2. So that is 18. Your x sub 2 is equal to 8 meters. And then we have plus 1.75. Multiply this one by 6. And then plus 1.5. Multiply this one by this distance, which is x of 3, and x of 3 is equal to 3, and that one is equal to 0. Hence, the value of the vertical reaction at point B is now equal to 4.5 kilonewtons. Next, let us try to determine h of V, summation of moment about A about A is equal to zero, counterclockwise moment, positive. So we have your H sub V going counterclockwise, multiply this one by 18. So we're getting, so minus two, that is minus two, multiply this one by X1, and X1 is equal to four, meters. 
and then minus 2. Multiply this one by x sub 2, and x sub 2 is equal to 8 meters. And then m minus 1.75, multiply this one by 12 meters. 1.75, multiply this one by 12 meters. And then we have 1.5. Okay, so that is minus 1.5. Multiply this one by, we're getting moment, multiply this one by x3, and x3 is equal to, no, we are getting moment about that point. Sorry, so hv, so we have, let's start with 2. So this is moment about point A, so this is, so we're getting moment about point A. So 2 atama, okay, so minus 2. Multiply this one by 4. Okay, so mi minus 2. Multiply this by 8. Minus 1.75. Multiply this one by 12. Then we have minus 1.5. Multiply this one by. So this is 18 minus x3. 18 minus x3. And x3 is equal to 3, so that is equal to 15. 18 minus 3 is 15. Minus 0 0.75, multiply this one by 18. And this one is equal to 0. Hence, your h of v is now equal to 4. Point five, so it's so be equal to four point five kilo newtons. Okay, so let us try to determine now the slope. Okay, so the slope of this is equal to. So this is x sub one. That one is six. Hence, this one is two. And uh, your y1 is equal to, so as an y1 is equal to 2. Hence, the slope in here is 1, 1. Okay, so let us try to determine this one, the slope of that. So the slope of this one, <coughs> so this is equal to a 6, this is 8, therefore this is 2. And y sub 2 is equal to, so here's y sub 2, 4, hence 2 and 4, so this is 1 and 2. So we have 1 and that is 2. So let's try to determine the slope of this 1 in here. So if that is 2, this is 4, and y sub 2 is also equal to 4, hence the slope is 1 is to 1. And let's try to determine the slope of this one in here. So this one is 3. And uh, y1 is equal to, so this is 3, and y1 is equal to, so your y1 is now equal to, uh, no, y, okay, so ito, so this is equal to 3, and your y3 is equal to, where's y3, 3, hence, this one is 1, 1. So those are therefore the slopes, okay, of the uh, web members or the diagonals of the given truss. Okay, let us now determine the bar force in each member of the given truss. So let us start at joint A. So at joint A, 
we have uh, this is now your joint A so we have one kilonewton and then we have the reaction AV is 4.5 and then we have your A horizontal is equal to 0 then we have AC so I'm going to assume AC to be in tension so this is now your AC okay so your AH is equal to 0 and then we have your AB so let's try to assume AB to be in compression. To be in compression. So your AB is in compression. We have now your AB. And the slope of AB is, so we have, this is now 2, 1, and this is therefore the square root of 5. Have the square root of 5. Now, summation of forces vertical is equal to 0. Then we have upward forces positive. So we have minus AB, the vertical component of AB, is minus AB, 1 over the square root of 5. And then minus 1 plus 4.5 is equal to 0. Hence, your AB is now equal to 7.826. 7.826, so this is kilonewton. Again, we get a positive value. Hence, the direction of AB is correct, and that is in compression. Now, summation of forces horizontal is equal to 0 to the right forces positive. Okay, so we have AC minus the horizontal component of AB, which says AB 2 over the square root of 5 is equal to 0. So your AC is now equal to AB, which is 7.826, multiply this one by 2 over the square root of 5. Hence, the value of AC or the bar force in member AC is equal to 7 kilo newton. So you get again a positive value, hence it is in tension. The direction, assume direction is correct, and therefore that is in tension. Let us now proceed at joint B. So we know now the bar force in AB and the bar force in AC. So let us proceed to joint B. So we have now at joint B. So joint B, so we have your member. So this is your joint B. B. So we have the other member at joint B as your member BC. So this is your member. So we have your member BC. Now, so your So we have the 2 kilonewton loading there. 
So we have a vertical, 2 kilo newton load. So this is now your 2 kilo newton load. So this one in here is now your AB. And AB is in compression. So that is your AB, which is equal to 7.826. Now, I'm going to assume BD. So this is now your BD, also in compression. So that is your BD. Also your BC, I'll assume that one to be in compression. And this is your member BC. So let us try to get now the slope of member BD. So the slope of member BD, so it is 1, 2, so this is the square root of 5. And the slope of member BC is this is 1, 1, this is therefore the square root of 2. Now, summation of forces horizontal is equal to 0. So if you try to get summation of forces horizontal is equal to 0, we have to the right forces positive. So the horizontal component of AB, again, the slope in here, is 2, 1, the square root of 5. So the horizontal component of AB is 7.826. Multiply this one by 2 over the square root of 5. And then we now have your BC. So that is going to the left, minus BC, we now have 1 over the square root of 2. This is the square root of 2. And then minus BD, so minus BD, multiply this one by 2 over the square root of 5. 2 over the square root of 5. And this one is equal to 0. So we have, this is 7 minus. <laughs> okay, so minus 1 over the square root of 2. And that is now your... BC minus 2 over the square root of 5, and this is now your BD, and that is equal to 0. And let us try to consider that one as the first equation. Now, summation of forces vertical is equal to 0. Upward forces positive. So the vertical component of AB is 7.826, 1 over the square root of 5. And then minus your 2 kilo newton, and then plus BC. Minus your 2 kilo newton, and then plus the uh, vertical component of BC plus BC, 1 over the square root of 2. And then minus BD, that is 1 over the square root of 5. And that one is equal to 0. So we now have 1.5. Plus 1 over the square root of 2 BC minus 1 over the square root of 5. Multiply this one by BD is equal to 0. So we now have the second 
equation. So let us try to solve. Let us try to solve 1 and the 2 simultaneously. So for the first equation, so we have 7 minus 1 over the square root of 2, that is BC, minus 2 over the square root of 5, BD, is equal to 0. And for the second equation, so we have 1.5, so that is equal to 1.5 plus 1 over the square root of 2 BC minus 1 over the square root of 5 BD is equal to 0. So let's try to solve the two equation simultaneously. So let us try to add the two equation. So we have 8.5. So this is 0. So minus 3 over the square root. The square root of 5, BD, is now equal to 0. Hence, the value of BD is equal to 8.5 times the square root of, uh, okay, so we have 3 over the square root of 5 is equal to 8.5. So the value BD is now equal to 6.335 kilonewtons. So this is 6 Point three three five kilonewtons. So we get a positive value again. So your BD is in compression. So that one is in compression. Next, let us try to So we now have to substitute BD in either equation 1 or equation 2. In, so let's try to substitute BD in equation 1 or equation 2. So in equation 1, we have now have 7 minus 1 over the square root of 2, this is BC, minus 2 over the square root of 5, and the value of BD is 6.335. 6.335, and that is equal to 0. Hence, 1 over the square root of BC is now equal to 1 over the square root of 2BC is now equal to, so your BC is now equal to 1.866 kilo newton. We get a positive value, hence the assumed direction is correct, and that is in compression. Okay. Okay, so let us now proceed. Uh, Proceed to joint C. Joint C, we now have the members at joint C are. So this is now your joint C.
So we have your BC. And this is now your CD. So this is your joint. Okay, that is your joint C. Okay, so this is now your AC. And AC is in tension. So that is your AC, which is equal to 7 kilonewtons. And then, we now have your BC, which is in compression. So this is now your B. C and that is equal to 1.866 kilonewton. So the slope of BC, so we now have the slope of BC is 1, 1, so that is the square root of 2. Now I will going to assume CD to be in tension. So this is now your CD. And the slope of CD is 1, 2. So we have the square root of 5. And your CE. So we now have your CE. Now, summation of forces <laughs> vertical is equal to 0. Summation of forces vertical is equal to zero. Then we have upward forces positive. So this is minus the vertical component of BC, 1.866. Multiply this one by one over the square root of two. And then plus the vertical component of CD, that is two over the square root of 5, this is equal to 0. Hence, your CD is now equal to, CD is equal to 1.49 kilonewtons. We get a positive value, hence the assumed direction is correct, and that one is in tension. Okay, summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero to the right forces positive. So we have CE, and then we have uh, plus CD, we have one over the square root of five. And then plus, BC is 1.866, so have 1 over the square root of 2. And then minus 7 is equal to 0. So your CE plus the value of CD is 1.49, 1 over the square root of 5 plus 1.866, 1 over the square root of 2, minus 7 is equal to 0. Hence, the value of CE is equal to 5 kilonewtons. We get a positive value, hence the assumed direction is correct, and that one is in tension. At joint H, so let us try let us proceed to joint H. So we have joint H. Okay, so this is your HV and this is equal to 4.5 kilonewtons. 
Now, this is now your 0 0.75 kilo newton. Now, so this time, I will now going to assume your EH to be in tension. That is your EH. And this one is to be in compression. And this is now your GH. And the slope of GH is equal to, so this is your GH, so 1 and 1. So this 1, 1, we now have the square root of 2. Now, let us try to take summation of forces vertical. Summation of forces vertical is equal to 0, then upward forces positive. So we have a positive 4.5 minus 0 0.75 minus the vertical component of GH, which is equal to 1 over the square root of 2. And that one is equal to 0. So the value of GH is now equal to, we have 5.5. 303 kilonewtons. So we get a positive value, hence the assumed direction is correct, and that one is in tension. Now, summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero to the right forces positive. So we have minus EH. And then we have plus the uh, horizontal component of GH. And the horizontal component of GH is 1 over the square root of 2. And this is therefore equal to 0. So your EH is now equal to GH, which is 5.303. Multiply this by 1 over the square root of 2. We now have your EH is therefore equal to 3.75. 3.75 kilonewtons. We get a positive value, hence the assumed direction is correct, and that one is in tension. So we know now your GH, and we know now your EH. So we have how many members left? One, two, three, four, five members left. Okay, so at joint G, so there are only two unknown members. So joint G, so that is at joint G, so we have. So this is your the load and this is equal to this one is equal to 1.5 kilo newtons and your GH okay so the value of GH is 5.303 and that is in compression so this is your GH which is equal to 5.303 kilo newtons. Now, I will now going to assume EG to be in compression, and so this is your EG. So the slope of EG, so where is EG? So that is 1, 1, so we have the square root of 2. Also, I'm going to assume your FG. So I'm going to assume your FG. So this is now your FG to be in compression. Your FG to be in compression. So we have 
the slope of FG is equal to, where is FG? Okay, so this is 1, 1. So we have the square root of 2. So 1, 1, the square root of 2. Now, let us try to take summation of forces vertical. Okay. Summation of forces horizontal. Summation of forces horizontal is equal to 0 to the right forces positive. So we now have your FG, okay? Multiply this one by 1 over the square root of 2. Plus, we have EG, multiply this one by 1 over the square root of 2. And then minus the horizontal component of GH is 5.303. So the slope of GH still is 1, 1, so the square root of 2. Multiply this one by 1 over the square root of 2 is equal to 0. So we now have, okay, so let's try to multiply this by 2 over the square root of 1. Okay, so I'm going to cut. Okay, so we have 1 over the square root of 2FG plus 1 over the square root of 2EG minus 3.75 is equal to 0. So we have the first equation. Summation of forces vertical is equal to 0. We have upward forces positive. Minus Fg, 1 over the square root of 2. So plus, we have your Eg, multiply this one by 1 over the square root of 2. We have uh, plus Gh. And GH is 5.303. We have 1 over the square root of 2 minus 1.5 is equal to 0. Okay, so we have minus 1 over the square root of 2 F sub G plus 1 over the square root of 2 E sub G plus 2.25 is equal to 0. So this is your equation 2. So again, let us try to solve 1 and 2 simultaneously. So for equation 1, so we have 1 over the square root of 2. This is F sub G. And then plus... 1 over the square root of 2, e.g., minus 3.75 is equal to 0. And your equation 2 is minus 1 over the square root of 2. So this is fg plus 1 over the square root of 2. This is e.g. plus 2.25 is equal to 0. Again, let us try to add the two equations. 0. So we now have uh, 2 over the square root of 2. That is now your EG. Minus, we have... Uh, Okay, minus 1.5 is equal to 0. Hence, the value of EG is now equal to 1.5 times the square root of 2. So we have, let us write, 
to divide this by 2, so that is equal to your E, G is equal to 1.0061. 1 0, 0, 0, 6, 1 kilonewton. We get a positive value, hence EG is in compression. So the value of EG is in compression. Next is, let us try to Let's try to substitute EG. So substitute EG in either equation 1 or equation 2. So I'm just going to use equation 1. So we have 1 over the square root of 2FG plus 1 over the square root of 2 this time, EG is 1.061 minus 3.75 is equal to 0. So 1 over the square root of 2FG minus 3 is equal to 0. Hence, the value of Fg is now equal to 3 times the square root of 2. And this is equal to 4 point, so 4 4.242. This is in kilonewton. Again, we get a positive value. Hence, the assumed direction is correct. And that is in compression. Okay, so we are through with FG and your EG. Let's proceed to joint E. So joint E, so we have a joint E. So this says EG one one. So we have your EG and then we have your DE. Okay, so we have and uh, this one. Okay. So this is your joint G. So this is now, this is CE, and CE is equal to 5. And then this one is now your EH. EH is equal to 3.75 so we have your EG and EG is equal to so the value of EG is 1.061 now we have the slope of EG so the slope of EG is 1 1 the square root of 2. Okay, so we have now this member is now your member EF. And this member is your member DE. So I'm going to assume member DE to be in compression. And the slope of DE is 1, 1, that is the square root of 2. So, first, summation of forces vertical is equal to 0. Okay, so let's try to get summation of forces vertical 
is equal to zero upward forces positive. Okay, summation of forces vertical is equal to zero. So we have now minus the vertical component minus the E, multiply this by one over the square root of two. And then we have plus EF minus EG and EG is 1.061. The vertical component is 1 over the square root of 2. That is summation of forces vertical minus plus minus and that one is equal to 0. So we have minus 1 over the square root of 2DE plus EF minus 0, okay, that is 0 0.75 is now equal to 0. So summation of forces horizontal is equal to 0 to the right forces positive. So we have the uh, horizontal component, the E, 1 over the square root of 2. And then we have minus 5 minus a plus 3.75 minus the horizontal component of EG, 1.061. Multiply this one by 1 over the square root of 2, and that one is equal to 0. Hence, the value of DE is now equal to 2.828 kilonewtons. We have positive value, hence the assumed direction is correct, and that one is in compression. Okay, so let us try, if we consider this one as the first equation, let us try to substitute this one in equation 1. So minus 1 half, 1 the square root of 2, and DE is 2.828 plus EF minus 0 0.75 is equal to 0. So the value of EF is now equal to, so the value of EF is equal to 2.75 kilonewton. Again, we get a positive value. The assumed direction is correct, and that one is in tension. Okay, so let us now proceed to joint F. So joint F, we have so joint F, so we have This is your FG or GF. Uh -huh. So we already have taken this one. And then we now have your DF. So this is your DF. This is your 1.75. So this is your EF. So this is your EF. And EF is in tension. Then we have your FG is in compression. So your FG and your FG is equal to 4.242 kilonewtons. So we now have your DF. So this is now your DF and the slope of DF. So the slope of DF, 1 to the square root of 5. 
So let us try to take summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero to the right forces positive. So we have the horizontal component of DF that is 2 over the square root of 5. So minus the horizontal component of FG. And your FG has a slope which is 1, 1, the square root of 2. So the horizontal component of FG, which is 4.242, multiply this one by 1 over the square root of 2, and that one is equal to 0. So that the value of DF is now equal to 3.354 kilonewton. So we get a positive value, hence the assumed direction is correct, and DF is in compression. So we know now the value of DF. So the bar force in all of the members are now determined. You tabulate now these values.